All right, folks, now it is time for me to walk you through uh, some chargers and uh, walk you through my sort of thought processes. I compare them against each other. And if you look at the list of chargers I've made, you'll see that basically what I did was I went to Hobby King and I looked up LiPo chargers. And uh, you'll see that most of the ones uh, on my list are the reactor line. And the reason I did that is uh, that I like the fact that reactor has this line of chargers sort of from low end to high end that will let us see how the specs compare they all have kind of the same set of features and set of specifications and they're all sort of spaced out along a line from low end to high end so we can sort of see how they compare i've also included the accucell 680 watt and the neutron 200 watt uh charger and the reason i did that is because they are two of the only chargers that high, if not the two only chargers that Hobby King sells that do high voltage uh, lipos, 4.35 volt lipos, the for it, with Turnigy that would be the Bolt line, uh, and there are a few other manufacturers making them under different names. Now people will show up in the comments and tell me about other chargers that do high voltage. Thank you very much to anyone who does that for helping flesh out this information. And then I've also got the iCharger 308 Duo on here. Now when I posted the uh, original videos. A lot of people said, oh, you got to check out the iCharger line. And I did check out the iCharger line. And I, I fully confess to never having looked closely at the iCharger line before. And I'll tell you why. And I, it, I'm cheap. I'm cheap. I, I mean, sometimes I, split, I feel like there's a lot of value. And, and, it, and sometimes I feel that way. But most of the time, I don't feel that way. Most of the time, I want something that will get the job done and that will leave me more money in my pocket to buy props and ESCs and motors and McDonald's and other things. And if you look at the iCharger line, you will see that spec for spec, they're much more expensive than, say, the reactor line from, from Hobby King. And then I have to ask myself, you know, what am I getting with that money? And, I, you know, I have held this charger, uh, which is reactor's highest end charger, and it has good it has good build quality you know i haven't i haven't torn it open and like looked at the inside but it feels like it has good build quality it has the kind of features that i want out of a charger and nothing about the eye charger makes me go oh man this is so much better and and if you compare spec for spec uh i mean the eye charger i've got is the 308 duo which is one of their cheaper ones and it's 269 it's still the most expensive charger and then it just goes up from there to 99 for they have like 800 dollars chargers and i'm like really because i could buy like two copters for that price so i know some of you are shaking your head and going this guy doesn't get it and i i you know maybe i don't but that's where i'm coming from you know the eye charger is in here and we can see how it stacks up uh but um but I haven't in charge included the whole iCharger line. And frankly, folks, I acknowledge there are a whole bunch of other things I haven't included. There are many, many other potentially good chargers out here that just didn't come across. There's one that I didn't include that has a soldering iron built in. I kind of was like, oh, I should put that in. So there's a lot of other good chargers out in here that are probably worth consideration. My goal here is not to take every charger on the market, because there's too many of them, and run them down and tell you which one's the best to buy because everybody has their own opinions. I kind of wanted to just take a small set of chargers and I picked the reactor line because I just, I shop at Hobby King when I'm shopping for this kind of thing. And the reactor line is just sort of one product line that will stack up well against itself. And I want to run you through the specs and tell, show you how to think about the specs so that if you've got a charger you're considering getting, you can think about the specs, you can run the math, and I'm going to link you to this spreadsheet if you want to go and sort of put your own information in the spreadsheet and see how they stack up. So I'm not going to tell you which one of these is the best, but I am going to hopefully show you like how I would think about how they stack up. And then you can do the same thing for the iCharger line if you like the iCharger line and you want to pay for it or any other one you want to look at. All right, let's get into it. I ran down what these individual specs mean in my previous video. And I want to reiterate one thing to you, and that is that what you care about is the output rate, the output charge rate. In other words, how fast will this charger charge my batteries, right? Uh, and I want to remind you that the limiting factor is the input amps or the output amps or the output watts. Whichever one of those you hit first, that's the one that will 
limit you, okay? Remember that the input amps goes down as your input volts goes up. And what that means is that if you are not running at the maximum input volts, which most of us probably aren't. Most of us are probably running off a 12 volt supply. And if you're like me, you've cranked the, the, the trim pot on the 12 volt supply up. So you're actually running it closer to 15 volts, but that's about it. Most of us are not gonna run this thousand watt reactor off a 36 volt supply or a 24 volt or 28 volt supply. So most of us are gonna be limited by our input amperage and are not gonna achieve the full output wattage of the device. As a result, I have compared all of these chargers based on the 12 volt specification because that's where most of us are going to be running them. So the numbers I'm going to give you will not quite meet the manufacturer's specs on the label. And that's why. If you will be, if you know that you'll be running this charger at 18 volts or this charger at 24 or 28 volts or this one at wow, 36 volts, you got a 36 volt bench supply. You're going to take three 12 volt batteries and hook them up in series. You could do it. If you know that that's the fact, then your numbers will be somewhat better than the numbers I'm going to show you. But most of us are going to be running at 12 volts. And so that's, uh, that's where I'm going to be at. Let's take a look at these comparison slides. And we'll start with the 3S. And let me tell you what I've done here. This is pretty cool, I think. First thing I've done is I've listed the maximum amperage that the device will be able to pull at 12, 12 volts input with a 3S output. In other words, if it's rated for 80 amps and it's outputting, or sorry, if it's rated for 80 watts and it's outputting 12.6 volts, how many amps is that? And actually, if you look here, I've used actually 3.9 volts per cell as the baseline. Why didn't I use 4.2 volts? When it's up at 4.2 volts, Per cell, you're going to be in the balance phase or you're going to be done and you're not going to be, you're not going to be pushing many amps anyway. So I use 3.9 volts per cell as the nominal voltage because the idea is that's where, that's the point in the charge cycle where you still are probably going to be wanting to push as many amps into the battery as you can, but you, you, you still, if I, if I were to use the lower voltage, it would inflate the amps that it looks like the charger can do. So I kind of picked the highest point in the charge cycle where you still want to be pushing amps and you haven't entered that sort of trickle phase oh, as you get close to full. So uh, based on 80 watts divided by 3.9 volts per cell at 3S, you get 4.62 amps. This one can push 11 amps. Okay, what about if you were running at the maximum input voltage? In other words, instead of running at 12 volts, you were running at 18 volts. Well, now that number goes up to 6.84 and 17.09 amps. These numbers that are in red mean that you would have exceeded the output amperage limit of the charger. So if we go back, uh, as you raise the input voltage, the output wattage goes up. The available output wattage goes up because the input amperage goes down. All right. But eventually you hit a point where the output amperage has hit the amp limit and raising the output wattage any higher doesn't get you any additional output. So this charger at 3S voltage, it would be out, it could output as much as 21 amps according to its 250 watt limit. But it, it has a hard 10 amp output limit and you're never going to get more than 10 amps out no matter what the theoretical watt limit might be. So another way to put that is that when you see this number in red, if this is a scenario, if you're charging under 3S, in other words, then you're not going to get the full watt limit. You're not going to get 250 watts out of this. No matter what you do, you're only going to get 10 amps and, and you would need 21 amps to get 250 watts. Okay. So then we show the actual maximum amps that you could pull at 3S at 12 volts input. So although this charger is rated for up to 10 amps, if the watt limit will kick in and you will only be able to get 4.62 amps at 12 volts input. And then these last two columns I think are, are really interesting because these columns say, if you were charging at a 2C rate, how many milliamp hour could you push? Okay. And that's interesting because, first of all, if, if you're charging at a 1C rate or discharging at a 1C rate, 
you will fill or deplete the battery in one hour. That's the definition of 1C relative to a milliamp hour. If that doesn't make sense to you, think about it sometime when you're in the shower or whenever. And it was one day a light bulb will come on. If you're discharging at 1C, any battery at 1C, you will it should last exactly one hour. If you're discharging at 2C, it should last exactly a half hour. If you're discharging at 3C, it should last 20 minutes. 4C, it should last 15 minutes. And the same is true for charging. So when I say that this is the 2C charge rate, this is also like saying, how many batteries could you charge in a half hour? Okay? So this charger, based on all of these numbers, whichever limit will kick in first, the amp limit, the watt limit, the input, whatever, all that stuff, this charger will charge 2308 milliamp hours of 3S batteries in a half hour. Oh, this charger will charge 5000 milliamp hours of 3S batteries in a half hour, and so on and so on, all the way down the line. Uh, now, that if you have a 5000 milliamp hour 3S battery, this charger will charge it in a half hour. If you have a 2500 milliamp hour battery, this charger will charge it in 15 minutes. If you have a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, this charger will charge it in an hour at 2C. If you prefer to charge it 1C, cut these numbers in half. If you're willing to charge it at a higher charge rate, you know, you just change the multiplier, right? And you can see here, I've got, I've got it divided out by the multiplier. You can change that if you prefer. The other thing uh, is that if you're doing parallel charging, then just add up your battery capacities. So if you have five 1,000 milliamp hour 3S batteries, this, this will charge them all in parallel in a half hour. And then this column shows the same number if you were running all of the channels of the charger at the same time. Now, for the single channel chargers, this number doesn't change. But a couple of these chargers, like this reactor, has four channels. And so that's if you were running all of the channels in parallel at their max capacity. That scenario is not realistic for everybody. For example, if you have the reactor 4X 300 watt charger, right? The fact that you're probably not going to be running all four channels with parallel charge boards hanging off of them at max amperage. You're probably going to just run one battery off of each channel and pump it as fast as you care to. But if you want to know what the absolute max is, there it is. Okay, so here's 3S. Now we go to 4S. Notice that as the voltage goes up, fewer of these numbers are red. And what that means is that there is more advantage to having an increased input voltage. In other words, at 3S, you could run at 12 volts input. Most of these chargers aren't going to benefit very much from going to a higher input voltage. But at 4S, you, you definitely start to get benefits from going to a higher input voltage. Fewer of these numbers are red, and you will, you're getting hampered more if you're running at 12 volts input voltage. And here are the numbers for the chargers. Let me, oh, I can just barely not fit it on screen. There you go. Okay. And here's 6S. And notice that at 6S, almost none of these numbers are red, and almost all of these chargers will only achieve full performance if they're running at the, the maximum or close to the maximum input voltage. And that really matters because if you're running 6S batteries and you're deciding which of these you're going to buy, you may want to ignore the increased watt rating. It may not be helping you if the if the amp rating is going to be the, the limit, okay? So, uh, for example, if we go to the raw data, uh, this guy, the reactor 1,000 watt, 30 amp success, needs 36 input, vo 36 volts DC. I think it, I think it maxes out. Oh, I've got, a, I've got actually got a note about this right here. 1,000 watts at 24 volts or higher. 500 watts at 12 volts. So if you're going to be running this one at a th at 20 at tw uh, 12 volts, then you're only going to get five 500 watts, not a thousand watts. You know, and as you go to 6s, then the amperage kicks in. You know, and and so so you may not get the full rated wattage out of it if you're not going to be running at uh, the the maximum input voltage. And that so anytime you see these numbers in red for your scenario know that you're going to be limited by the amperage, not the wattage, and you may want to kind of ignore the wattage rating and think about the amperage rating, okay? Just go ahead and look at either the single channel or the all channel 
amp milliamp hours, assuming you're charging at 2C and 12 volts VN. Those are the assumptions I've made. And that'll kind of give you an apples to apples perspective on how fast the charger can charge. I will put a link to this spreadsheet in the, in the description of the video. If you want to play with the numbers, you want to add your own charger, or you want to play with some of my assumptions, Hopefully you can make sense of what I've tried to make it comprehensible and you can sort of play with it and tweak it however you feel like you want to. Hope that's helpful. Hope that's educational. Happy flying.